Hello everyone, welcome back to Foolish Engineer. Imagine if you control current with pinpoint precision using just a voltage signal and some obvious electronic circuitry. Well, today we are going to break down one of the coolest yet simplest circuit, a voltage to current converter using a BJT. We'll dive into how it works, every component's role, and see how to design one. So, let's start. If you ever felt stuck between your socket ideas and an actual working PCB, then let me introduce our partner of today's video, which is RTM. RTM Designer is a complete PCB design tool where we capture schematic, design PCB layout, run simulations, and create manufacturing ready electronic circuit all in one software. It starts with schematic capture where we transform our paper circuit to a proper design, which is ready for simulation and layout. Then we can run SPICE simulations to test our design, to check the performance and catch any mistakes before they cost us time and money. And after that, we can directly optimize component placement on PCB and design layout with advanced routing tools. It even helps with wiring harness design, where we can plan, design, and document our wiring harness, which connect PCBs with each other. And now it gets even better with Altium 365, which connects our design to our teams, manufacturer, and even component suppliers to cloud. With this, our team can review, comment, and collaborate on the projects from anywhere in the world. Very important feature is its bomb portal. It keeps our component sourcing organized, where we can track component availability, compare suppliers, and check if we got the right parts before placing an order. So remember, Altium Designer is where we design our electronics and Altium 365 is how we connect with the team to build the project into reality. And the best part is you can try Altium Designer for free. And when you buy the license, you get 25% discount. You just have to click the link pasted below in the description. So now on the video. Consider we are controlling a smart pizza delivery robot. This robot gets speed and direction commands. But instead of blindly following them, it adjusts its wheel torque based on how many pizzas it is carrying. Why? Because heavier pizzas need more push. Now here is the twist. We don't tell the robot how much force or current to give to the motor directly. We just provide the required voltage or speed we want. And the robot figures out in real time exactly how much push it needs to keep the deliveries on time, whether it's carrying one slice or a whole party box. And that's what our V2i converter does. We set a voltage input like giving speed command and the circuit just like the robot calculates and delivers the perfect amount of current to the load. As the robot adapts its effort based on the weight, the circuit uses feedback to keep the current steady, no matter what load we throw at it. A voltage to current converter simply converts a voltage input into a controlled accurate output current. It is an analog circuit that produces an output current directly proportional to its input voltage. The key design objective is to maintain constant current regulation irrespective of the load impedance variation, which is very important in systems where current control defines performance and safety. At its core, the V2i converter follows easy Ohm's law, where REQ is the equivalent resistance determined by the feedback network and sensing register configuration. The circuit dynamically adjusts its internal voltage drop, usually through an active element like a BJT or MOSFET to maintain this current, compensating for changes in load resistance. The output current remains constant even if the load impedance fluctuates. Especially in low side configurations, the load voltage can exceed the op-amps supply, 
useful in high voltage application. The op amp continuously corrects the drive signal to the BJT, ensuring stable operation across temperature and supply variations. This is the BJT based low side V2I converter. It is what we have got an op amp, a BJT, a current sense resistor R5, a voltage divider R1 and R2, and finally a compensation network R3, R4, and C1. Let's see the significance of each component one by one. First, we have input voltage supply, and we need to convert this voltage to current as per the requirement. Let's start with the input resistor voltage divider R1 and R2, which scales down the input voltage so that it can be processed by the op amp, ensuring it stays within the common mode input voltage range of the op amp. Well, this op amp is the core control unit. It compares the voltage at the non-inverting input with the voltage at the inverting input, which is feedback from the current sense resistor R5 and adjusts its output to force the both input to be equal. Now, this part is the feedback path. R4 connects the voltage across R5 back to the inverting terminal, forming a negative feedback loop. R3 isolates the base of the BJT from the op amp output and decouples BJT base capacitance. C1 provides high frequency compensation. It bypasses the BJT for fast changes in current, stabilizing the loop by improving phase margin. These components form a frequency-dependent feedback network which stabilizes the circuit and ensures proper dynamic response. This power BJT operates in its active region, behaving like a current amplifier controlled by the op-amp output. The collector is connected to the load and a very high power supply. The emitter is connected to the current sense resistor R5. The base is driven by the op amp through resistor R3. The op amp increases or decreases base voltage to T1 to control its collector emitter current such that the voltage across R5 equals the scaled input voltage. This is the actual external load that receives the controlled current. The load is connected to a high voltage source, which is much higher than the input supply for the op amp. That's why we use a low side current sensing topology. The circuit ensures that the regulation is maintained independent of the load voltage as long as the BJT stays in its active region and doesn't saturate. This resistor converts the output current into a voltage for the op amp to sense and regulate. It forms the core of the feedback mechanism. Before diving into the circuit design, let's look at what we are trying to achieve. The goal of this voltage to current converter is simple. It should convert an input voltage ranging from 0 to 10 volts into an output current between 0 to 1 ampere. The maximum input current drawn by the circuit must stay below 200 microamperes, making it a high impedance input stage. The op amp operates on a single supply of 15 volts as VCC with ground as VEE. The load is connected to a separate supply voltage of 36 volts, much higher than the op amp supply. Now, let's go through the calculations one by one. We want a maximum of 100 mV across the sense resistor when output current is around 1 ampere. This keeps power dissipation and compliance voltage drop low. This resistor converts output current into a measurable voltage. Now, we select R1 and R2 so that the input voltage is scaled down to 100 mV at the op amp input. The input current through the divider must be less than 200 microamperes. So first, we solve for R2. So R2 will be around 500 ohms. Now, we calculate R1 using this. So, we use R1 as 49.3 kilo ohm resistor. The final transfer function for this circuit becomes like this. Plugging in actual values. 
So a 0 to 10 volt input directly produces 0 to 1 ampere output current. Let's now go into the detailed technical explanation and calculation strategy for R3, R4 and C1 which form the compensation and feedback stabilization network. These components don't directly define the output current, but they ensure loop stability, especially when dealing with high current loads and large single transients. Let's now look at the stability loop. To ensure that this op-amp plus BJT combination responds quickly and doesn't oscillate or overshoot, we introduce three critical components, R3, R4 and C1. This resistor connects the voltage drop across sense resistor R5 back to the inverting terminal of the op-amp. It provides low frequency feedback that determines the main feedback path. This helps maintain the loop gain accuracy for steady state operation. It is sized large enough to prevent overloading the sense node but small enough to maintain strong feedback. Typically, we can choose it from 10 kilo ohms to 100 kilo ohms. But here we'll use 15 kilo ohms, which provides good balance between speed and loop gain without burdening the op amp. This resistor isolates the op amp output from the base capacitance of the BJT. The power BJTs have considerable parasitic capacitance at the base which can lead to phase lag, instability or ringing in high frequency response. This R3 damps the high frequency oscillations and improves the phase margin. It also limits the inrush base current during fast transients. We use a 153 milliohm resistor, which is a good standard value for this purpose. Now comes the interesting part. C1 bypasses the BJT entirely for high frequencies. At low frequencies, feedback flows through R4. But at high frequencies, C1 offers a low impedance path, feeding the sensor resistor voltage directly to the inverting terminal of the op amp. This improves the phase margin by shifting the dominant pole of the system and suppressing the high frequency loop gain, which otherwise might cause the oscillation. Think of it this way. DC and midband gain is controlled by R4, while C1 dominates feedback above the corner frequency. The corner frequency of the RC network can be calculated like this. So above around 3.3 kHz, the loop gain starts to roll off faster, giving us a stable phase margin and preventing high frequency oscillations for the circuit. These three components, R3, R4 and C1, and just decorative add-ons. They form a frequency compensated feedback path tailored for power stage dynamics. Without them, this BGT based current source could become unstable, especially with fast changing load or longer wire inductance. Just like the order delivery robot, we can control LED's brightness without blowing it using such circuit or a battery charging circuit where current needs to be regulated precisely. Think of the circuit like a dimmer switch that may think and adjust itself in real time. We explored a beautifully engineered voltage to current converter using just a BJT and op amp. We can simply use a Darlington pair or a MOSFET instead of a BJT by adjusting some design values. If you learned something from this, don't forget to check the description for references. If you found this video useful, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more exciting content.